one of the things that attracted me to intellectually think about heaven and God and religion and relationship and dealing with Jesus on a personal level as well as knowing God intimately was the fact that there was always something more I was told at least by Jesus than what we actually know that there were things that we can't see that were probably more important than what we could see when I first approached Bible studies I had a interesting teacher by the name of Chuck Messer and he brought out the concept that there were dimensionalities to the reality of our existence that there was more to life than meets the eye so to speak that there was two dimensions we understand we understand one dimensional you know just kind of flat two dimensions you know height and depth and all those things and then 3d you know you you know what 3d glasses are like well fourth dimension and fifth dimension just kind of like time and space and those kinds of things but people don't really understand dimensions completely but they accept it when it happens and that's kind of what happened to John when John was suddenly in a dream or suddenly taken there he went to heaven now who knows was his body still there did he go in his spirit was he you know how did he do it I don't know I know that the scriptures tell us that John went to heaven and I accept that he stepped out of the dimension of we what we look at time space maybe what we could say fourth or fifth dimension but stepped into God's reality now the things that happened in heaven to me were very interesting you see people reading the book of Revelation forget that it's a account of what he saw not something figurative not something spiritualized not something made up and not something misunderstood John wasn't stupid he had been around long enough to know what he was talking about he described it to a T of what we will see and that's the fact of what the book of Revelation is all about and that's why I found it interesting for me as a born-again Christian who experienced something that I couldn't define you see I was an intellectual oh I don't know ahead of my time I guess you'd say as a child I questioned everything so when I was very young I read an encyclopedia set and that kind of ruined my experience when it came to fairy tales Santa Claus tooth fairy and a lot of other things that most people take for granted I unfortunately discovered through knowledge that it was not real <laughs> and so I kinda I wasn't cynical I just was ahead of my time I guess and I read a dictionary you know I found that interesting too so I, I learned a lot of words you know when I was very young a very avid vocabulary but then I kinda jumped into science fiction because I enjoyed that because it took me someplace that I knew you know was beyond my comprehension and I was fascinated by how science fiction could inspire me and the interesting thing was that that complemented when I finally became born again my faith because suddenly I came into contact with God who stated pretty clearly and then proved to me very actually that he was beyond my understanding that no matter how much I thought I could imagine there's no way I could come even close to the reality of who God is that I liked you see if I could figure out God I didn't want to be a Christian because to me it was like man-made I figured psychology sociology or some theology would have made it up and made it into something that I could see through you see Eastern Oriental and Occidental and all these other mysticism ideas you know whether it's Buddhist or Taoist or Zionist I saw through the phoniness of it it doesn't take a genius to really sit down and kind of like examine all the world religions and if you're out to prove them or disprove them whichever way you want to look at it if you're sincere and honest about it if you really look at them you know lay them out on the table and try to try to sort them out as far as factual data is concerned you know and being you know let's say honoring them then of course you don't follow them because they really don't make any sense I could get through it to the point where it's like it ended and I'd say 
man, that's just mental gyrations. You know, it's just like philosophical, you know, spiralings that men invent in order to make themselves feel better. And so, I would not have been a Christian had it not been for intervention by a living God. Now, once that happened, I was, to put it bluntly, I like to say it this way, and I'm just going to say it the way I think of it. I was screwed. <laughs> this was beyond my understanding. This was something I couldn't put in a box. You see, everything else in my mindset, because I was actually pretty smart as a young man, I could put it in a box. I could figure it out. I could come to the conclusion of it very quickly, very sharp when it came to connecting the dots. In reality, when it came to God, though, and Him speaking to us, and the reality of the scriptures, once I discovered how in-depth they really were, wow, it blew my mind. And you see, that's what makes me a Christian and keeps me a Christian, is that it's beyond my understanding. And I can argue anybody's point of view. I mean, it was easy to find schools of theology, and you know, like whether it be a Catholic or a Protestant or any of the other types of sectarianisms, you know, and all the different ways that they promote themselves through their dogmas and doctrines and all those things. Oh, I could argue and debate them just for fun. I mean, that's to me is like just mental stimulation. It's not even it doesn't take a genius to figure that out. You know, give me a cup of coffee and boy, we're off on a roll. You know, and. I think most Jewish people today that are Israeli, that's why they become atheists, because they can see through the phoniness of Orthodox Judaism. They can see through the phoniness of most religions. The one thing they can't see through is when God intervenes. You see, that was Paul's problem. Paul knew it all, so to speak. As far as dealing with God, he said, before the law, I was righteous. You know, I, I had done everything. I, I had reached the, you know, the culmination of what my religion could teach me. And he had. And he proved it. Especially in the book of Hebrews. But then one day, God intervened. And he just went, whoop, what is this? This is what the prophets had always said could happen. But now it happened to him. God intervened. God directly spoke to Paul. And that's what happened to me, was that God directly spoke to me and ruined my religion, so to speak. Now, really, it gave it more meaning and purpose, more design and function. It actually enhanced my religious life in a lot of ways that are magnificent in my mindset because it gives me appreciation for all that we have done in Christianity as far as religious observances are concerned. But it also gives me a different perspective, one that maybe you don't have, and maybe you kind of like decided to sit down on your hiney and stay there. And that's, hey, I'm heading for heaven. I ain't heading to hell, and I want to go there as soon as I can. I want to check out what's going on up there. I want to go find out all the rest of the universe. Have you thought of it that way? Have you thought about your life as being Let's hurry up and get over with it so we can get on with it. You know, eternity, the eternality of being able to exist beyond the limitations of our own body, our own soul, our own feelings, but to experience something more, greater, even beyond our comprehension. Now that is what I'm looking forward to. A lot of people, you know, they talk about the end of the world, you know, and it's true, it's coming. You know, they talk about you know this, that, and the other thing, and it's true, it's true about this, that, and the other thing. They'll talk about heaven, they'll talk about hell, but you know, I'm more interested in what's going on, you know, in the universe. I'm more interested in what's going on in this dimension that I don't know about. I mean, I pretty much looked around the world, you know, and you could do that in Google pretty fast, you know, and while it's kind of nice, you know, it's pretty like today, you know, it's nice to have some sunshine, you know. It's nice to have rain, it's nice to have snow, it's nice to go on these, you know, binges where, you know, a lot of people get into either extreme sports or some kind of extreme feelings to, so that they can, you know, experience some hype, you know, that they want to have because they can't just be content and enjoy where they're at. Me, myself, I'm never satisfied. I look at something, I go, eh, that goes up to a point, but then it ends, you know, like, how about free flight? 
you know, without there being the problem of wings or gravity or those other things. How about dimensional reality, where there's more than what we can see, touch, and feel? How about the reality that John said? Even the things that Paul said when he said that, I know a man, I know not whether in the body or out, that you know, saw things that he could not even speak of. I want to know about that. Or like when Jesus, you know, have you ever thought about these words that Jesus said when he said something about, you know, we speak what we know, but we don't even speak about what we could speak about because if we did, you know, it would be like, man, you couldn't even comprehend what little we do talk about. So if we tried to talk about other things, you wouldn't even get it. Huh. I'm more like, wow, I want to be in on that conversation because, you know, this whole thing about sin and repentance and cross and atonement and sanctification, hey, you know, they're going to be fighting about that and arguing about that and debating that and playing with it, you know, till the cows come home or till the cows die. But the point is, once you know it, you want to go beyond it. You know, you don't want to just keep rehashing the hash to try to come up with a new version of hash. Really, what you want to do is you want to move on into something like, wow, what is God doing? What is God really like? What is God himself, the person of God, in his place? What's it like being in his home? That's what I want to know. I want God to invite me home. And I want to go check out his living room. Because I'm getting kind of tired of the old place, you know, that I've been living. It's kind of like, you know, it's getting dull and boring, you know. It's kind of like, seen, been there, done that. Yeah, seen there, been done, you know. People tell me, like, some new thing that they get all excited about. I'm like, well, okay, you know, that's what you get excited about. But there comes a time when really you want to look at the world as it is and realize, hey, it's corrupt. It's all messed up. It's all wrong. Once we get it right, we'll be there for, you know, maybe a thousand years, you know, and God will kind of do his thing, you know. And, but then there's going to be more beyond that. You know, like the new heaven, new earth. That's what I want to see. I want to see the new rather than the old. I want to check out the new model rather than the old stuff that we're leaving behind. It's kind of like, yeah, you know, I, I like the idea of sharing the gospel and telling people about Jesus, and it's wonderful because, you know, it changes their lives, and they get changed, and they do things, you know. They discover that they could be more than they are, but at some point in time, you even think, you know, so what? Do I want to be more of what I am, or would I rather be more like what he is? And until I get there... I know I won't be anything like what he is. No matter how much I think I may have changed, the reality is, until we actually step into heaven, we're nothing like what the Son of God is like. Because God our Father, when he looks at us, sees his Son. Because if he saw anything else, he'd wipe us out. <laughs> In a way. I mean, it's kind of like we're, we're more like tinder clay, you know, tinder... Like, you know, the little wood that you have on a striking match, you know, when you strike a match? We're like that little wood, you know. It's like, if we get one spark, poof, we'll catch in the flame and, you know, be consumed. And that's kind of like what the love of God does, is that it consumes things that, you know, really aren't of the right nature. And that's kind of what happens when you get in the presence of God, is that, you know, if you don't have the right nature, poof, you're consumed. <laughs> kind of like being in a lake of fire. Hmm. Maybe there's something there. But my point is this. Do you really feel satisfied where you're at? Are you content, really, with your little kind of like goofy worship service, you know, and your kind of happy-go-lucky, you know, Sunday morning, and you're kind of like, you know, waking up, getting older? Are you getting any wiser? Or really is it getting time to leave all this behind and say, hey, God, let's get on with it, you know? Never mind about postponing. Let's hurry up and come quickly. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Because that's where I'm at. I don't know about you, but you know, I don't want you to see your retirement accounts mature. I don't want you to see another child born into this world the way it is. I don't want you to see your children grow up. I'd rather you save them and God took them to heaven with you, you know, so we could get on with real life than sit here and try to pretend when we look around like this is glorious hey man this is like living in a garbage pit compared to what's going on up there Keith Green said and that's where I'm at you know 
there's nothing left in this world that really has an appeal to me that I haven't at least looked at, tried, or done something about. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm out of here. <laughs> Just biding time. So maybe you feel the same way sometimes, that you want to move on and move out and move into that place that Jesus said he prepares and goes to prepare a place for you. I think he's got it ready. Maybe he's getting one more ready for somebody you know, but I think your place is ready. So wouldn't you like to go check it out and see what it looks like? I know I would. I know I'm kind of looking forward to that. How about you? What are you really looking forward to? The next Super Bowl? Who cares? The next baseball game? The next season? This summer? Getting into a bikini? Getting out of a bikini? Getting into your weight? Getting out of your weight? Whatever it is? Really? Is that what motivates you and you get all excited about? How sad. Because all that's going to change. And believe me, it's going to change very soon.